Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at differential analysis pricing decisions. This recording is an introductory recording to these topics. We're going to go over more topics later on, but in this session we have to understand the basic terms because we're going to be using the basic terms later on in make or buy, drop a product or drop a division kind of decision. This topic is also covered on the CPA BEC section as well as cost accounting. As always, I'm going to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so and subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have 1,800 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth. Also, I do have a website, farhatlectures.com, where you will find additional resources to complement and supplement this course as well as other accounting and finance courses. I strongly suggest you check out my website. So what is differential analysis? Every, every manager or every person that's making a decision will always have to choose between two alternatives. And if we don't choose between two alternatives, then there's no decision to make. If you only have one option, then you're not really making a decision. Well, in other words, when you're making a business decision, you have to look at the revenue and the cost. You don't have to look at all the revenues and all the cost. You have to look at revenues and cost that's going to change among alternative. So the process of doing that is called differential analysis. Now, for differential analysis, we have to learn about terms, certain terms. The, the first term we're going to uh, we're going to look at is avoidable cost. What is avoidable cost? Avoidable cost is a cost, is an expense that will not incurred if a particular activity is not performed. So if you don't undertake a particular activity, you don't incur the cost. But if you do, you're going to incur the cost. So it's avoidable in a sense. Avoid that activity and you will avoid the cost. Don't produce the, don't produce the laptops. You don't need a microchip. You don't need a microphone. You don't need a speaker inside the desktop if you don't produce a desktop. But if you do, then then you have to incur that cost. So avoidable cost is basically it will not be incurred. You can avoid it. How can you avoid it? Don't undertake that this don't undertake that product. Avoidable cost primarily primarily are variable cost. Hopefully we all know what variable cost they vary with your production and they can be removed from a business operation by stopping the activity. Unlike fixed cost and you should know the difference between variable and fixed. Fixed cost must be paid regardless of the activity of the level. So if you are producing desktop, you have to put a microchip in every desktop. Or if you're producing a laptop. Well, guess what? If you don't produce a laptop, you don't incur that cost. So the cost varies with your production. But you might have to pay the rent for the warehouse where you are producing those laptops. So the rent is a fixed cost, whether you produced or not. So the rent is, it cannot be avoided, but that microchip can be avoided. Well, unavoidable cost, well, cost that's still incurred even if the activity is not performed. Back to the, if we are producing tablets or uh, or laptops, whether you produce tablets or the laptop or not, you have to pay the insurance on the building, you have to pay for janitorial services, for security, so on and so forth. Those costs are unavoidable. That means you can't kind of run from them. You cannot avoid them. Some examples include depreciation on the equipment. If you have any depreciation, you have to pay your property tax, lease payment, interest expense, etc. These costs are often considered fixed costs. And by nature fixed, it means they cannot be avoided, whether you undertake some some activity or not. And those costs are irrelevant. So now we need to talk about what's relevant cost, because that's what we need to know, whether something is relevant or not. Well, relevant cost is an avoidable cost. So notice relevant is avoidable that is incurred only when making specific business decision. So if a cost is relevant, it's avoidable. It means if you if you if you do it, you're gonna incur the cost. If you don't do it, you're not going to incur the cost. So avoidable costs are relevant costs. So the cost that will be affected by specific management decision being considered. So based on the decision, you're gonna incur that cost or not. It's relevant to your decision. So management use relevant costs in decision making. So we have to know which one is our relevant cost. Okay? This way, we will find out, based on our analysis, whether to close a business unit or to make or buy parts, labor, or whether to accept customer last minute special order. So based on those, based on those relevant costs, we can make those decisions. Differential cost is very similar to relevant cost, refer to differences between the cost of two alternatives. So, so if you have 
two different costs, then the cost must be relevant because if you if you undertake one option A versus option B, the cost is different. Therefore, differential cost is relevant. Relevant, of course, it's relevant. Okay, so the cost occurs when a business faces several options and a choice must be made by picking one option and dropping the other. Well, it's a there's a difference between one option versus the other. Then it's a differential cost. Differential cost is also relevant. Opportunity cost is relevant. What is an opportunity cost? It's the it's the cost that you give, uh, not the cost, the benefit, the potential benefit that you give up by on choosing one alternative over another. For example, if you're listening to me this moment, you have an opportunity cost. What is your opportunity cost? What is your opportunity cost? What else can you do? What's the next best thing can you do rather than listening to my lectures? Well, you can be working at McDonald's. You can be playing games. You could be making $100 an hour. I'm not sure. But the next best thing is what's your opportunity cost is. What are you giving up to, to, undertake, to undertake this, to undertake an activity, to make a product? The, uns the opportunity cost is unseen because people don't think about it and can be easily overlooked and it's not recorded anywhere in the accounting system. So in the, in the accounting system, you don't say, well, this is my opportunity cost. So an, an opportunity cost is basically something you have to think about when you are making an actual business decision. Basically, it's, it is quantitative, but it can be non-quantitative if you want to think about it that way. But it is relevant. Opportunity cost is relevant to our decision. Sunk cost. What is a sunk cost? It's first of all, it's irrelevant. In other words, if they tell you the sunk cost is $200,000 or you have to know what is a sunk cost. So first you have to know what is a sunk cost. A sunk cost that something already happened, it cannot be recovered. So if you bought a machinery five years ago and you paid for it a trillion dollar, you don't take that into account today. Why? Because the trillion dollar that you paid for it or whatever that amount is, it's not relevant. Why? Because it's already sunk. You cannot recover this it's like you know you can cry about it but there is nothing can be done so it's a sunk cost sunk costs are irrelevant now if you're going to be selling that uh, uh, machine that it, it could be relevant under the decision making but the old cost is irrelevant so those are basically basic terms that you need to be familiar with simply put you need to know what's relevant what's relevant well, a differential cost, the cost that differentiate between two alternatives is relevant. Avoidable cost is relevant. Opportunity cost is relevant. Why is that important? Because when we're going to be making decisions, we're going to be talking about um, relevant cost, avoidable cost, differential cost, and opportunity cost. They differ between decisions. So how do we make differential analysis? And by the way, about differential costs, we also have differential revenues. So if you are choosing between two alternatives, also you have to look at if they differ in terms of revenue. How do we make differential analysis? First, we, un we analyze, look, relevant cost. We don't analyze all the costs and all the revenue. We only analyze relevant costs. That's why you might have a lot of factors, a lot of costs. You only look at the one that differ. If two costs are the same, you don't look at them. You don't examine them. You only look at the one that differ. And this is basically simplify the process. Then you compare your analysis to the status quo. You look at what you have now. You analyze the situation and you would look at what you have currently or what's the other alternative. You examine also non-quantitative factors. I mean, numbers are very helpful, but at the end of the day, you have to make a professional judgment and make a business decision. Then you make your decision. And usually what we're dealing with in cost accounting, we are dealing with pricing decision. So how do pricing decision happen? Well, prices, how do you determine your prices? The main factor is based on supply and demand. That's one of the main factor, because if you, if, if there's a lot of supply for a product and you cannot just say, well, it costs me more than, you know, what I can offer it in the market. If there's a lot of supply, you have to drop your prices. And if you can't compete, you get out. Okay, so, so supply and demand is important, but also what's important is to understand the full cost. And what is the full cost? It's basically you have to, to take into account all costs to make and sell the product. Like what? what? What's the full cost? Variable cost, producing and selling the product, and organization fixed cost like HR and other support. So you have to take into account variable as well as fixed cost your share also of fixed cost. If you remember from the cost volume profit analysis, the full cost per unit is your fixed cost divided by that unit plus your variable cost divided by that unit. So it's your variable cost plus your fixed cost. Long term, uh, long term pricing, basically simply put, your selling price in the long term must cover 
your full cost not must cover everything because if you don't you would run out of resources because you'll be selling your product less than cost and what happened in the long term you go out of business in the short term you might be able to use only your variable cost using full cost you could have what's called a full cost fallacy and would look at it and uh, would look at an example to see what this full cost fallacy is it means sometimes you don't need to allocate certain fixed costs when you are making short-term decision this is what we mean so how do we make a pricing decision let's take a look at basically the decision three first you have to understand when you are making a pricing decision for special order what is a special order special order means somebody came to you and said why don't you sell me your product for lower than what you're selling it to other customers they might be a foreign customer they might be a customer out of your uh, sales network so just they want a special price the first thing you have to look at when you have a pricing decision is determine whether you have excess capacity excess capacity means you can produce the product to sell it to that person then you have to determine is your revenue a greater than your a greater than or equal than your variable cost if your revenue is greater than or equal than your variable cost you accept you accept the offer if your revenue is less than your variable cost, you reject. That's assuming you have excess capacity. Simply put, is the, if the extra revenue cannot cover your variable cost, you'll be selling it at a loss. And we would look at an example in a moment. Now, if the firm does not have excess capacity, so you don't have that excess capacity for the special order, remember, if that's not the case, then you have to give up some other sales because to serve that customer, you have to give up other customers because you have a limited capacity. Okay, so accept only if the revenue is greater than the variable cost plus the opportunity cost that you are given up. If that's the case, you will accept. Also, bear in mind special orders also take into account non-quantitative non factors such as qualitative factors. You know, what's the importance of this customer? Maybe you are getting into a new a market. We, we always wanted to do that. There's other factors that, that you will have to take into account. And let's take a look at an example to see how this all fits together during a particular month you develop and receive a special order from an out-of-town merchant who's willing to pay four thousand dollar for ten thousand photo prints developed or 40 cents per unit an analysis of the you develop cost structure shows that it incur variable cost variable cost equal to 36 pennies per print and 1500 monthly fixed cost you develop can handle the special order without affecting its regular business, aka we have plenty of capacity. Should you develop, accept, or reject the special order and why? Well, let's first, let's take a look at our full cost. If we take into account our full cost, remember, we have to recover our fixed cost plus our variable cost, which is 36 pennies times 10,000 divided by 10,000 unit. Our, our full cost is 51 pennies. Now, should we accept or reject this order? Well, if, if they're paying us 40 pennies and our full cost is 51, at face value, you're going to say, well, um, I should not do so. I should not do so because I'm going to be losing 11 pennies. But are you really losing 11 pennies? And the answer is no. Why not? Because you can factor out, you can not take into account the monthly fixed cost because you are going to pay that monthly fixed cost regardless whether you produce those additional units, 10,000 photo prints or not. Therefore, guess what? If they're paying you 40 pennies, your cost, your variable cost is only 36 pennies. Therefore, you are making 4 pennies per picture and you will accept because your incremental revenue, the additional revenue, which is 40 pennies, is greater than your variable cost which is 36 pennies you have plenty of capacity therefore you would accept you would accept or i could ask you what is the minimum price you would accept let's assume i'd say you know i did not give you a price of 36 i'd say what's the minimum price you would accept i need to cover my variable cost my variable cost is 36 pennies anything 36 pennies or above i will accept let's take a look at another quick example let's assume desert adventure now offers self-guided tours in addition to its tradi traditional guided tours they started with. So it's basically a tour company. At the current level of activity, the self-guided tour do not affect the company's ability to offer the guided tour. So there's plenty of capacity there. A local museum director asked Desert Adventure about offering discounted self-guided tours to museum members who donate above a certain level, basically part of uh, advertisement. The museum expects that five members will want to do this. They want to take that tour. Desert Adventure has idle capacity adequate for these additional five tours, which will not affect the demand from other 
self-guided tour. So we have plenty of capacity. The museum di director asked Diana to offer the members a special price of 700 per for the tour and a discount of the regular $900. So they usually charge 900 for those self-guided. They say, let's see if we can do a $700. Let's see what we have for now. This is what we have for now. For now, we provide 20 tours at $900. The total revenue is 18,000. The variable cost, including food, labor, and so on, is 320 times 300 is $6,000. The contribution margin is 12,000. We should be familiar with all these computation from the CVP chapter. If not, please go to your CVP lecture. Fixed cost, insurance, depreciation, other costs, 5,400. Operating profit is 6,600. Now we're going to look at the uh, what happened with those five additional at 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 $700. This is the status quo, 6,600. Now the alternative is we're gonna have revenues of 21,500. Why 21,500? Because to the 18,000, we're gonna be adding 3,500. We have five members. In each one, we're gonna charge them $500. Total revenue, 21,500. Variable cost will go up because we have five additional members times 300 so we're going to add 1500 to the variable cost it becomes 7500 our new contribution margin is 14000 notice fixed cost by nature is fixed it stays the same our operating profit is 8600 so the difference is in revenue revenue is a differential revenue we have a differential cost and therefore our operating profit will increase by 2000 should we accept yes of course we will accept another way to do this is we're going to take an alternative way so uh, to compute this is we're going to have five tours at 700 and the only thing that's going to increase is our variable cost of five tours at 300 so we're going to have revenues of 3500 more expenses of 1500 overall we are 2000 better off we will Accept. In the next session, we would look at legal issues relate, relating to cost and sales prices. If you like this recording, please like it and share it. If it benefited you, it means it might benefit other people. And don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. Study hard, good luck, and of course, stay safe.